For BRAF inhibitors, common side effects include morbilliform rash, photosensitivity, palmar plantar hyperkeratosis, verrucal keratosis, alopecia, curling of the hair, keratosis pilaris, paniculitis, seborrheic dermatitis, and eruptive nevi. Let's go through each one by one. A morbilliform rash is maculopapular. This means that there are macules, which are flat, discolored spots on the skin, as well as papules, which are raised bumps. Lesions are often on the torso and extremities, but spare the head and neck. For treatment, counsel the patient on gentle skin care. You can refer to our videos on tips for gentle skin care for more details. For grade 1 toxicities, emollients are sufficient. For grades 2 and 3, the patient can use oral antihistamines. Mid to high potency topical steroids like betamethasone valerate 0.05 or 0.1% or mometasone can also be considered. Ointments are preferred over cream since they are generally more effective. For more severe or refractory eruptions, consider oral steroids. At times, dose reductions or temporary holds of the medication might be indicated. Targeted therapies may make the skin more sensitive to the sun by decreasing the threshold for sunburn and UV-induced skin damage. A patient with photosensitivity may present with blistering and painful erythema from brief sun exposure. The patient should be counseled on strict sun protection. Please refer to our video on tips for sun protection for more details. Palmar plantar hyperkeratosis is characterized by redness or yellowish thickening of the palms and soles at pressure points. More severe eruptions may lead to deep fissuring, pain, and difficulty with ambulation. To treat palmar plantar hyperkeratosis, counsel all patients about gentle skin care and reducing friction with supportive socks or shoes. Patients should be counseled to not walk around barefoot or wear tight or ill-fitting shoes. For grade 1, the patient can use thick emollients at bedtime with occlusion as well as topical keratolytics such as urea 20% cream. For grade 2, consider topical steroids class 1 or 2, topical anesthetics, oral analgesics, and antiseptic soaks. For grade 3, dermatology consultation is required for consideration of systemic retinoids. Treatment interruption may be needed. Verrucal keratosis is characterized by verruciform, wart-like, white keratotic papules. It is often widespread in distribution and infects both photoexposed and non-photoexposed skin. If the patient is symptomatic or you're unsure of the diagnosis, refer to dermatology. The lesion needs to be monitored for changes suggestive of squamous cell carcinoma. Non-scarring alopecia can be treated with topical minoxidil 2-5%. Long-term treatment, usually for 6 months or more, is required to observe any improvement. Treatments must be continued indefinitely to maintain these improvements. Other changes seen in the hair with BRAF inhibitors include curling of the hair. Keratosis pilaris presents as diffuse keratotic papules in a generalized distribution and may be accompanied by significant pruritus. Treatment includes counseling on gentle skin care. For grade 1, the patient can use emollients and topical keratolytics such as urea, alpha hydroxy acids, salicylic acid, and retinoids. For grades 2 and 3, consider topical steroids and oral antihistamines. Keratosis pilaris is generally self-limited. Paniculitis involves inflammation of the subcutaneous fat, resulting in painful nodules under the skin. It affects the upper and lower extremities and may be associated with arthralgias. For treatment, NSAIDs can provide analgesia, and a short course of oral steroids may be considered. Refer to dermatology for advice on treatment and diagnosis and consideration of a biopsy. Seborrheic dermatitis presents with pruritic erythema in sebaceous gland-rich regions of the body. There may be a greasy yellow scale. It can be self-limited, but at times can become quite severe and symptomatic. Treatment includes topical imidazoles and topical steroids. Patients may also present with eruptive nevi, which is a sudden onset of pigmented lesions on the skin. Therefore, it's important that the child's healthcare provider conduct a full body skin exam prior to starting on targeted therapy. 
lesions should be monitored and any changes should be documented. Referral to dermatology may be needed for suspicious lesions.